Welcome back to No Sleep Till on the Ryer on YouTube channel. Travis Ryer back with you following Tuesday's practice, day six of 2024 training camp for the Jacksonville Jaguars. First full pad work of the preseason for Doug Peterson's team. No shortage of observations here on today's program. And really, you went into this thinking, going from shorts and helmets going into full pad work, even with the encouraging signs that you saw from the offense from about the midway point of Monday's practice through the end of the workout, would Trevor Lawrence, would this offense be able to sustain and carry that over into full pad work on Tuesday? And the answer was a very definitive yes. And with that, the narratives change quickly, right? For fans. It goes from when the defense is dominating or the defense has the upper hand, a lot of fans equate that to overall, overall lack of success for the football team, right? You never hear when the defense is dominating, wow, we we could win it all with this defense. It's more like, well, we're not going to win six games because this offense just isn't going to get it done. And understanding it's all about offense or largely about offense in today's game, but Boy, with the offense picking things up over the last couple of days, it's like going from 6-11 and 11 potentially to now 15-2 and two in the regular season. And all it takes is one or two practices, again, with an emphasis on the offensive side of the ball because through those first four practices, again, most Jag fans didn't want to hear about an impressive defense. No, most of those folks want to know what the hell is wrong with this offense. And with that, there is borderline panic, it seems like, with some folks when it comes to every other play not producing an explosive play or a touchdown. And so a few days later, just a few short days later, and immediately on the heels of the Jags' best offensive practice of the preseason to date, no one is asking, man, what's up with this defense? Anyway, it was an eventful hour or so after the Jags moved into 11-on-11 11 11 and 7-on-7 7 7 work Tuesday morning. And again, if it was offense you wanted, it was offense you got. And we'll start to run through that as things kind of got underway with half-field work. What you had were quarterbacks, receivers uh, on one end of the field, Trevor Lawrence uh, and his wide receivers and, and tight ends. And then on the other end of the field, you had you know more of that work going on as well. And then on the other field, what you had was OLDL work on the first day of full pads, which was pretty much run games uh, centric, uh, either for the offense and the defense. Uh, and some of that was good to see because you wonder about the health of a couple of guys. Uh, it was good to see a guy like Roy Robertson Harris look like he was really ready to go again. Uh, still some things that you're sorting through, but looks to be a really quality bunch on that defensive front and in that front seven. And so with the quarterbacks and the receivers, you got things going. Trevor Lawrence working with his guys, you know, Gabe Davis early on, either a drop or a really nice pass breakup by Ronald Darby kind of depends on what your perspective of that was. Either way, it was an incompletion early, but Trevor followed that up really quickly with a very nice back shoulder throw to former Auburn star Seth Williams, Tuscaloosa, Alabama native Seth Williams, who made a very nice grab, a contested grab against really tight coverage. And then Trevor comes right back, goes to his guy, Evan Ingram, who performs a high point snatch on a corner out. Matt Jones, we see shortly thereafter. He comes with a dime to Josh Cephas in a very tight window. So from the outset, unlike Monday, where, again, it seemed to take some time, maybe about the midway point of the practice is when you saw the offense really start to click. From the outset, the offense really didn't waste time on Tuesday. From there, you progressed into some 11-on-11. 11 11, and when the secondary opened up that period, it was Darby, it was Darnell Savage at the slot corner. It was Andrew Wingard at safety, who unfortunately would ultimately leave the practice with a lower extremity injury. Uh, you also had Tyson Campbell at one corner and Andre Sisco at that safety opposite Wingard. Up front, you had Devon Hamilton and he says Ot Otami Wu. 
I get it right. I'll get it right. It says Otami Wu inside on the defensive line. And then, you, you know, you rotated some guys in on that back end too pretty quickly. Jari and Jones checking in. Uh, Antonio Johnson checking in at safety. Monteric Brown rotating in at a corner. Had a really nice deeper crossing route for Parker Washington from C.J. Uh, Beathard in the 11 on 11. And then you got to see some physicality and not just in the run game, but some big guys in space, a cool little screen to the left flat, which I don't think cornerback DeAndre Prince, the rookie from Ole Miss, thought was all that cool. Uh, the wide receiver screen because left tackle Walker Little in space absolutely planted DeAndre Prince. Pretty impressive uh, play there by the uh, left tackle Walker Little. Then you had some play action off a of zone read involving Mac Jones. Uh, and Josh Cephas ran just a great route against Christian Braswell, was able to turn that into an explosive play. Another great day, I thought, for Mac Jones. I thought for the quarterback position in general, really good stuff throughout. What I like about Mac is that he brings the juice to that room. I think he got a couple of flatliners and Trevor and CJ, which is fine. But I think it's nice to have a guy who, well, for lack of a better term, can be a little goofy uh, in Mac. He's going to bring energy on a daily basis. We'll talk about some more of that coming up here in just a little bit. And when it came to the run game, because you are in full pad work, you want to see more of that, even though you're thudding up and you're not taking guys to the ground, you're not doing anything intentionally that could bring injury to the forefront. The rookie running back, Jalen Jackson, with a nice little cut on a chunk run between the tackles. I thought that was pretty impressive. And then again, more good stuff from the quarterback position as Mac hits the Aussie tight end Murtaugh in the flat for a nice pickup. Move into some red zone 11 on 11. This is where it gets pretty serious because the field shrinks. You're trying to incorporate the run game into what you're doing down there. You definitely need to improve on things if you're this Jaguar offense in the red zone. And it gets started with a nice job by the secondary, which results in a coverage sack of Trevor. Then you've got Johnson in there at this point at safety with the ones uh, working alongside Andre Cisco. You get a you get a run blitz right after that. Uh, Nielsen and the defense they brought it off the left side, kind of overloaded the left side. And again, this isn't a time of year where you're game planning and you're checking a whole bunch side to side even on run plays, but. Uh, the Jag offense ran Etienne right into it, so that was a stuff. Then you had a pre-snap penalty, so you start worrying that maybe you're going to stymie out here a little bit on offense. But from there, a uh, good check down to Dearness Johnson from Trevor, and then the quick game, really nice block on a quick throw to Brian Thomas Jr. out in the right flat. It was Brenton Strange from his tight end position. I think he got Chad Muma on that play and was able to help spring Thomas down there deep in the red zone. You come back with more screen game, this time to Etienne. I like kind of the quick game down here in the red zone. Screen it to Etienne. You get Ezra Cleveland, the big offensive guard out in front. And I'll give Muma some credit on this play. When it was developing, it looked like a pretty easy touchdown or walk in for Etienne, but Muma did a nice job of, taking on Cleveland and helping to slow it down just enough to prevent it from going for a score. And you also saw on the offensive line with Cooper Hodges out on Tuesday and Brandon Scherf dealing with a facial laceration. We saw Blake Hans, you know, previously of the Browns and Niners. He's been with the Jags too. Uh, he got a little run there with the ones at right guard. And just after that, Tank Bigsby in there, he bounces it at the five and ends up going into the end zone. You got to be careful with touchdown runs, uh, even in full pad work, because again, there is no tackling to the ground. But I thought there were a couple of these where even if there were, Bigsby was going to score on a couple of these. And this was one of them. You set up Cam Little. This is interesting because you just cut Riley Patterson last night. So you're down to the 20-year-old rookie from Arkansas, the six-round pick. Cam Little, his first attempt 
without Riley Patterson around, goes wide right from about 55. So it wasn't a chip shot, and he had plenty of distance, uh, but just left it out to the right. You come back with Mac working with the twos here in this red zone, 11 on 11. Um, he goes out to Etienne in the flat for a touchdown, and it was – it wasn't a check down. It was a quick swing, and it just sort of illustrated that if you get inside linebackers in man coverage against Travis Etienne in that situation, or you got man coverage across the field and you can kind of clear things out, get it to him quickly in the flat, inside linebackers aren't going to be able to do much with that. It was a tough ask of Caleb Johnson, and he wasn't able to get there. And from there, Cam Little comes back on, and this time he's good from 45 so a little bit of a sigh of relief I mean you want to see how a young guy at that spot especially responds to a miss and he came right back out I don't think he missed another kick the rest of the practice I think he was five for five on his final five this one was from 45 ish he absolutely drilled it he had a good defensive play right after this Mac back in there um Hit Seth Williams with a slant, and Terrell Edmonds, the safety, knocks it loose. Couldn't really tell if it would have been a pass breakup or a forced fumble. Either way, a really nice play there by Edmonds. And then Mac comes right back to Joseph Skates and hits him for six. And then probably one of the top three plays of Tuesday's practice. Mac scores on a scramble from five yards out, and as he goes into the end zone, scores. Uh, just uh, spontaneously throws the football up into the stands with the fans. <laughs> so, uh, again, you just never know with Mac Jones, but it was a lot of fun. And, uh, again, Mac, second straight day, I thought he was really good uh, to go along with the other quarterbacks. Red zone, still in that area of the field. This time, though, this is a seven-on-seven seven period. Jari and Jones uh, and Antonio Johnson are in there now in the nickel with Darby, Cisco, and Savage. And something else you really like seeing in the red zone with Brian Thomas Jr. Because you anticipate at a minimum his speed in full field situations helping you out. What you're waiting to see is can he help you in the red zone as well. And on Tuesday anyway, he ran a little skinny to the post there uh, in the seven on seven. Lawrence hit him perfectly in time. Uh, and then Trevor just absolutely ripped a crossing route into Gabe Davis against over the top and underneath coverage. It was an elite throw. And that was one of the good things about the, the drill, the period coming into the, to the stands, into the bleachers, you get a really good feel down there for what, you know, the RPMs are like when a guy like Trevor Lawrence really lets it go. And this throw was absolutely on the money to Davis for a touchdown. And in case you're wondering the dynamic of how things were going from coaching staff to Trevor and the other quarterbacks, you had Press Taylor over there with the walkie talkie. So he was working the green dot with the, the quarterbacks and Doug Peterson kind of in a, you know, overseer role uh, there as the head coach. Uh, but working, standing directly behind the offense, as you might expect. C.J. Beth jumps in from there, uh, out cut, and it's a great, great catch by the younger Peterson, the tight end there. Lawrence comes in, extends to his left. I think in a game situation, this probably goes for a touchdown, but you know, you're working with a clock because you don't have a pass rush in seven-on-seven. Seven. So when Trevor extended to his left a little bit, the whistle blew just before he unloaded an absolute dart to Christian Kirk in the end zone. Uh, come back with some tight two-by-two two set for the offense from the five-yard line. And again, you work that concept with uh, Travis Etienne in the flat, pretty uncoverable. You get the two-by-two two, um, basically inside the hashes, and then you sprint Etienne straight to the flat and get it to him. Another way that you can help yourself improve in red zone opportunities, not just running the football, but getting the ball to your backs in other ways. Uh, and Trevor just continued the, the really impressive run here with a dime to Christian Kirk in the corner of the end zone against Gregory Jr., one of the reserve 
uh, slot corners that went for a touchdown. Matt comes in. He immediately hits Devin Duvernay uh, with a strike for six. So this is just a run on impressive quarterback play, an impressive offense for the Jaguars on Tuesday. You shift back to 11 on 11. This time it's red zone oriented. And so with no wind guard uh, available, you're looking at Jarian Jones, Antonio Johnson, Andre Sisco, Darnell Savage, Tyson Campbell. That was your five here in the last period of 11 on 11. You get things going, as we know, if you watch the show, we love it when Trevor Lawrence is on the move by design. Early boot action, he's able to hit tight end Luke Farrell. Thought it was a good day for the Jags tight ends. Not just Christian Kirk, who, by the way, some really good play design early. If you're going to go against defenses, and Ryan Nielsen's is going to be like this, that are pretty aggressive in their approach. Boy, if you can get, you can move the launch point one way and get a guy like Evan Ingram crossing the field the other way, you can really hurt a defense. And that's what the Jags were able to do with Trevor and uh, Evan earlier in the practice. I think on the back end, you lost some leverage back there. I don't know if it was Antonio Johnson, uh, but Ingram was just wide open. You got that defense going one direction, crossed it deep, not just a crosser, but a deep kind of reverse post um, to Evan Ingram, that deep throwback to the tight end. And that was a thing of beauty as well. But you're back into the 11 on 11 in the red zone. Uh, we talked about Trevor to Farrell. You get a run to Tank Bigsby and a really nice job by Foyer and Andre Sisco of fitting it up. Good, good fundamental run defense on that play. Uh, then the offense tries to toss it to Dearness Johnson, use his speed out on the edge. But Jarian Jones, one of the things you look for in young defensive backs, not just can they cover, but can they set an edge against the run? In some instances, that's not one of the first things that, that go so well for a young corner in the National Football League. But I thought on this play, Jarian set a good edge, and that allowed Devin Lloyd to run and get over the top and help make the play on Johnson short of the goal line. Uh, you did have Tra uh, Travis Etienne go in from three yards out on a run. I thought on that play – the right side of your offensive line. Boy, Anton Harrison, you can get behind that dude. I think you're going to have some good things happen, especially from down and close. Uh, and that was the case with ATN on that run. Cam Little comes back on, kicking it extremely well, makes again from 50-plus. You know, I'm not trying to jinx the guy because I've made some I've, – I've linked him to a certain kicker of note from the Baltimore Ravens going back to the draft when the Jags drafted him just in terms of potential in the way the ball comes off this little guy's foot. He's, he's not even 21 years old yet. You know, I know we equate physical maturation to positional players, but let this guy get to about 185 or so and maintain that flexibility and that, and that torque and that leg whip. I, he's he's already good from 70. It, it's going to be kind of amazing to watch to see just what the ceiling is for Cam Little. Again, though, I like the psychological part of uh, Tuesday as much as anything because he had the early miss, and he didn't just make the next one. He made every kick after that. Then you get Mac out there from the 15. Uh, really nice grab out in the left flat by Dearness Johnson. Uh, Mac throws it out there. He had good coverage, too, this time by Caleb Johnson, the reserve inside linebacker. Little comes on again, good from 50-ish, just drills it. And then you kind of cap things in 11-on-11 11 11 with another touchdown grab by the Australian tight end, Murtaugh, from C.J. Beathard this time, Little, because you can't take these extra points for granted in the NFL anymore either. I mean, they're essentially 32, 33-yard field goals, uh, and Cam caps it. With a with a stick splitter from the PAT range. So there you go. A running list of observations. Injuries not so good. We'll see about Wingard. 
looked like Scherf was going to be okay. Um, Ventrell Miller was sidelined. Uh, injuries have been too much a part of his storyline going back to his career at Florida. So you hope he's able to kind of shake that. I don't think it's anything serious and uh, get back into that mix at inside linebacker. There's there's guys like Caleb Johnson that benefit from it. And really right now, I think inside linebacker depth anyway comes down to pretty much three guys because you're seeing Devin Lloyd and Foyer out there together, kind of at the mic and the will. And now there's reached a point with Devin, and you heard this from Ryan Nielsen in his most recent press conference where they feel like they can move him to other spots. He can jump in there at Mike. He can green dot, I think, at this point, if needed, which is tremendous because a couple of years ago, he really struggled, it seemed like, with concepts. Uh, but he seems to be all in now and can handle just about any role you want to throw at him, including the green dot. Um, Chad Muma, you, you'll see in uh, the base at the SAM. Uh, and then when they go nickel, you'll see Savage right now come get Muma. That's the substitution from base to nickel. Uh, but Muma can also play inside. So you can go Devin Lloyd and Muma inside. That that would be kind of the three-man rotation, I would think, right now uh, at inside linebacker. So there you go. It is no sleep till right here on Ryer on YouTube. If you haven't, subscribe to our channel as of yet we certainly hope you'll do that turn on those notifications you'll get all of our content as it drops and if you don't mind how about a like can you hit us with a thumbs up that would be great as well travis ryer once again thanking you and until next time so long everybody